Tonight on Friday Night Fever, football is officially over, so it's on to the hardwood. In 6A, the Indians of Roseburg travel to the Purple Pit. Could Eli Leininger and company protect their home court? Eagle Point made the long trip to Marist. The Spartans were gunning for their 10th win of the season. In girls' hoops, 9-3 Sheldon hosted Grants Pass. How would the Irish handle the Lady Cavers? Top ranked Pleasant Hill is unbeaten in league play. Could they hold off with time? Hoop season is here, and we have you covered with those games and more. Friday Night Fever starts right now. Begin tonight with Roseburg heading to Eugene to take on the Axemen of South Eugene High School. We pick it up early in the game. Roseburg uh, hit that shot from downtown the right three there. three ball from number three. They were trying to stay in this one. How about South Eugene and answering, though? Three ball from 33. <laughs> That's right. And then Eli Leininger is going to have a big game for South Eugene as he gets the steal right there. But uh, Roseburg gets it right back for the deuce. Yeah. Back at the other end, it's South Eugene. Trey ball. A nice three right there as South Eugene uh, looking good. And here's Eli Leininger through the double team here. Wow. Strong move. Oh, First shot it. won't go. Second shot won't go. Third shot does go. So Follow if you your shot, don't succeed, guns. try, try, try again. And the third try worked there for Leininger. Roseburg falls to South Eugene by a final score of 57 33. The Axemen now 9 and 5 on the year. They have a showdown with Sheldon coming up on Wednesday. So good evening and welcome to this premiere edition of 2015's Friday Night Fever. John Franke along with Craig Loper. And Craig, we just did basketball or football. Well, we just did basketball now, but we yeah. did football not too long ago. But here we are already. It is basketball season. And we're still tired from the football season. Yeah, this guy was on the road a lot. The Ducks <laughs> went Pac-12 championship, Rose Bowl, national championship. championship. So it kind of pushed our basketball stuff back. But we are ready. We're in it basketball season 100 completely. Yes, we are. 100%. Yeah, 100% now, not right 100 there. completely. 100% <laughs> now. Um, so this winter, a lot of stuff going on um, and a lot of action going on. I mean, 6A, Sheldon, you know, they've always played well. Right. The Herberts, though, are gone. They're graduated. So how will they respond? Kobe Mitchell's a guy out there that plays well for them. And they were taking on Grants Pass tonight. How about we get to that game? The Irish trying their luck at Grants Pass on the road against the Cavemen. Sheldon gets the fast break going here, and Damian Willis, Will, Williams passes ahead to Brian Broncrado, former prep athlete of the week right there. That's a nice little lay-in. How about Grants Pass's Larry Cotton goes to the glass. That's a nice two points right there. And then I said it, Sheldon's Kobe Mitchell. That's called a floater, John, a big-time floater in the first quarter. Sheldon's Kellen Strom works down low here nice for spin. another lamb. Left-handed finish. Good one for him. Herbert, this is uh, Mitch Herbert's younger brother, gets that block shot on J.C. McKinley. How about that? Sheldon wins. Close one, 46 to 43. Another close one. Thurston looking for its first league win of the season. The Colts hosting North Medford. Tie game third quarter. Cade Bates lines up the jumper from the foul stripe and connects. Plus he gets fouled. The Colts take a three-point lead. Fourth quarter now. Colts down by six. Devin Baggett knocks down that three from the corner. Thurston pulls to within three. Seconds to go in the game. Now they're down by two. They get the ball inside to Cade Bates again. Nice move to the basket. He scores. That sends the game into overtime. Tied at 58. In the OT, the Colts up one. Tristan Holmes with a nice drive there. And that puts the Black Tornado ahead. And then it's Brian Shireman. And this we call the dagger. The three makes it a two-possession game. Thurston does does not recover. North Medford wins it in overtime, 68-63. John always gets to overtime games. I never get any <laughs> overtime games. 5-8 Midwestern action. Eagle Point on the road at Maris. Eagles were really all over the Spartans early. This is Jax Bell. Nice little finish underneath here. Gets that to go. They were on a 10-3 run to start the game. But closing seconds of the first quarter, Maris Ben Olive just as the former prep athlete of the week, Nick Matt, for the finish. As time expires, it tied it up at 10. Third quarter, Spartans up four now when Austin Tyner drives baseline with a nice finish there. Maris went on to win that game by 11, 60 to 49. 
Well, let's head down south to Crater High, where the what Comets the were hosting Churchill. That's a Comet, oh, apparently. Oh, that's a Comet. Gotcha. I guess. Crater down by 11 and a half, but they would come all the way back. And then with no time left, Dean Orozco hits that three to force overtime. In the OT, the Lancers' Jordan Nelson Whoa. hits that long-range jumper. They go on top by three. But Crater's Christian Reyes hits a three of his own to answer, and that would tie it back up at 60. Two seconds to go now. Lancers on top by two. Missed free throw. Rebounded by Crater with a miracle shot. Will not oh, go. Oh, that was close. And Churchill hangs on to win in overtime, 70 to 68. Junction City, the site for a Sky M League game between the Tigers and Elmira. How about Taj Wilson drive here and one nice little foul, nice hair Taj. I'm digging the flat top too, by the way. That's the best hair probably we've seen all season Definitely so far. Top five. Tigers fast break strip from Spencer Osborne right to Nick Gibson though, and that one made it a tie game. And how about Wilson again drives baseline, gets it to go Elmira. Myra up three. Good move from Wilson. Chris Prescott. Now, down move, post move, gets to go off glass. My bank is closed at this time, but apparently his is open. Tigers win 52 to 46. ATM is always open. Well, that does <laughs> it for part one of our show. Coming up next, we have plenty of girls' highlights to bring you, including Sheldon. Uh, they were hosting Grant's Pass. The Irish trying to go 10 and 3 on the year. That's coming up after the break. They're a happy bunch over there at Marist High School tonight, and yeah, for good they, reason. They right? got the win, <laughs> and we were upbeat about it. They were a little confused at first when I asked them to do that, but they, they picked it up eventually. They did a very nice job there, bringing us back from uh, segment one. Okay, <laughs> not a girls hoops now. Sheldon off to a great start as always. They're nine and three this season. Yeah, yeah. They uh, thanks really in the big addition to the transfer of Willamette transfer Autumn Bum Bumgarner, and we all know how Willamette produces athletes, so she's going to help out the Irish. Irish hosting Grants Pass first quarter. They get the steal, miss the lay in here, but check it out. They're there. Put back is all good. Finally, Hope Green Brooks. Guess what, John? She was a former prep athlete of the week. How many times are we going to say that on this one. show today? Next when was show, that? That was last possession. year? Uh, no, it was earlier this year, before the season. Ooh. Allie Anderson connects for three. Five nothing Irish run to start the game. How about the press defense working for the Irish? Sarah Hall, prep athlete of the week last year. I'm just saying, I, I do these stories. I know these guys. Uh, lays That's it been in. Traveling. I don't remember that one. The either. turnover, Irish upset. And now an 11 point Sheldon leave. Jaka Waters hits the three for the Lady Cavers. And then how about Bumgarner? Crossover and the tough bucket. Sheldon, they go on to roll in this one. 70 to 37. The final, the Irish improved to 10 and 3. And next up, they go to South Eugene on Tuesday night. All right, let's check out Roseburg hosting South Eugene. Indians head coach Rich Robles in his first year. Roseburg got 5 2 in the Indians, swing it around underneath to senior Ashley back in for the short jumper. They would take a five point lead. Still in the first quarter, it's Meg Jackson underneath. One dribble and up and under for the score to make it 9 5 Indians. South trying to stay in this game on the fast break right here. Nice pull up jumper, and that one goes to cut the deficit down to just two. But Roseburg too much, and they go inside of their big six foot three yeah, junior center, Jordan Stockport, and she gets the shot to go. Indians go on to win 63 34. At the Lancer Dome, David Hurd and the Crater Comets visiting Churchill. Second quarter. Comets are on a run, and Comets, you know, they streak through space fast, so of course they play on the basketball court fast, I guess. Courtney sets, sets her with the finish there, and then moments later, Olivia Ryerson, the pump fake, drives baseline, she scores, Crater pulling away in this one, and then how about the nice ball movement by the Comets, the high-low pass right there, sets her as the beneficiary of that one, Crater wins big, they pull away 71 to 44. Ashland making the trip north to take on the Millers. Springfield early in this game. Miller's on top by one. Emma Quinn will get the steal and she'll go coast to coast for the layup and Springfield takes the three-point lead. Ashwood would answer with a bit of a run here. McKenna Reed with the bucket. Put the Grizzlies ahead 10 to 8. Millers though answer and again it begins with the defense and again Whoa. it's a steal. This time it's Sanaya Simpson good with finish. the steal and she'll go all wow. the way. Really good finish. Springfield with a big win 56 34 over Ashton. All right, 3A girls hoops. Pleasant Hill hosting Lapine. Third quarter, the Billies are trailing by a point. Dana Brooks with the steal. She's going to go the other way. Check it out. Left handed finish right there at the other end 19 to 18 Pleasant Hill. Then the Billies go on a run. Alex leave it catch and turn for two. That one made it 23 to 18. Late third quarter now. Nicole Lewis 
She's open, and you don't want to leave her open, but she because she'll do that. All net, Billy's up eight, and Pleasant Hill knocks off Lapine 38 to 32. All right, How so about we that? are through with two segments. We have one more to go. That includes our top five plays tonight. I can guarantee you, number one play is a play we have not seen yet. Uh oh. So there is some drama there. <laughs> so stay with us for that after the scoreboards. Welcome back. Time now for our top five plays of this week. Let's get right to it. We start with some girls' hoops at number five. Emma Quinn from Springfield with the steal, and she'll go all the way for the nice layup. Nice finish there as the North wants to win big. How about number four? South Eugene Eli Leininger getting through the double team. That's physical basketball right there. He misses, but gets his own rebound and puts it in. Good move from him. Tenacious tenacity right there. Number three, the block here from Maris. Ben Olive, nice play right there from number 11. Tyner. Number two, Junction City. This is Nick Gibson. Off the steal, he was just, that's called awareness right there, quarter awareness. Right place, it. right time. Exactly. How about number one, though, a play we have not seen tonight, Thurston High School's Devin Baggett, a big time block. Whoa. Just as time expired to help preserve the tie and force overtime, take one more look in slow motion. Again, the buzzer sounds, but there is the block, and that would send the game to overtime. Unfortunately for Thurston, they would fall in OT to North Medford, but a nice effort there uh, as they were oh so close to pulling off the win tonight. And I say you always get all the overtime. Games because last year Thurston I had a few brink buzzer field. beaters last year. Last year we recall. started the season and it was down to the wire overtime buzzer right. beaters. And I had the one against Sheldon. The, yeah, the one against Springfield. So if I'm at your game, it's going into the OT. Close game. That's that's what you can <laughs> expect. Okay, have a great night. We'll see you next Friday.